Thank you for joining me, everybody, on Life and Surround. It's been a while, so I'm here to do an update. This is actually one of my favorite things to do, uh, to go over just whatever is exciting and has caught my attention in multi-channel music at this time. I've been away for a while because I have been working hard on one of my own songs, and I have completed a song demo. It still has some flaws, but I think it really gets the point across. And for any of you who are interested in what I'm doing with my free time when I'm not listening to commercial multi-channel music and reviewing it, I'm working on my own album. My last album was 2017, I think, and it's time. I'm due. I caught the writing bug, and I'm having a good time, and I'm really excited about the latest song. It's called Evangeline, and I think it might be one of the stronger songs from this project, so I, I really feel like sharing it. Again, there's some flaws. It's just a demo, so any constructive suggestions could make it to the record, so I'm going to attempt final tracking once I've amassed you know, a, a reasonably good body of, of work to move forward with. I'm shooting for about 44 minutes, classic LP length, and I wanna go for like an excellent stereo mix, an excellent 5.1 and an excellent Atmos mix. So I'm going to, I hope to be working with like one of my favorite engineers or maybe an up and comer who um, does excellent work and really wants to put their name on something just weird and current. Okay, so thank you for checking out Evangeline if you do. And again, I'd love your constructive feedback. Okay, so now let's get on with the commercial stuff. We have Stephen Wilson, Harmony Codex. It's slated to drop in autumn 2023. I don't have better information than that right now, but start saving your pennies. He's definitely going to do like a super ultra mega deluxe version and that may um, have the blu-ray locked in it he might do a standalone it's it's hard to say i think he always does a standalone so again i have really 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 panned his last solo record i i just don't like it at all i think i've heard it once in atmos and i just have never spun it again so i am hoping that this is a return to form i want to love Stephen Wilson's music again. So please, 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 for the love of all that is pure and holy, please let this be a great album, a return to form, or just something new that actually works. Hopefully he got whatever he needed to out of his system with his last record. Okay, so he is an expert multi-channel mixing engineer, and that is always one of the highlights for me of his releases. What I would like to see him do for this album is to mix all of the tracks into multi-channel because sometimes like his best tracks honestly aren't included in the album proper. So please, Stephen Wilson, please mix the whole project into to multi-channel, please. And thank you, okay? All right, so also along the lines of Stephen Wilson, we have Porcupine Tree, Closure, Continuation, Live, Blu-ray. It looks like it was filmed at the Ziggo Dome in Amsterdam. And Stephen Wilson always does really discreet, very, very, very worthwhile live mixes in multi-channel. So I expect we will get that here. And I expect it'll just sound amazing. And I'm really looking forward to this since I missed the, the concert. All right, next we have 2L, the Trondheim Concertos. Per usual, this is quite a lovely release from 2L. So far, I've only heard the SACD stereo, so I have yet to glory in the, the Atmos and the RO3D and the 5.1 that comes in this package. Per 2L's usual, you get an SACD and a, a Blu-ray at a super reasonable cost with exquisite performance and exquisite recording and, and mastering and production. So in my opinion, the only question is whether the music suits you. So I encourage you to audition the Trondheim concertos, see if it's your cup of tea. And if so, you can't go wrong with 2L. And, you know, Morton Lindbergh is a super duper nice guy, the head of the label. And I really believe in supporting music that's done excellently and in supporting cool people. So 2L, Morton Lindbergh, one of my favorite labels. I just, uh, I 
I never want to miss an opportunity to to uh, tell you about what they're up to currently, and I'm excited for what they might have coming next. All right. Next, we have Snarky Puppy, Empire Central. It is a live Blu-ray, from what I understand. It will be mixed in Atmos, and I believe you can pre-order it now. They are quite a cool band, and I am hoping for the best with the mix. I am definitely in on this one. I wouldn't want to miss it. Just hope it's a knockout. Steve Hackett, Foxtrot at 50, a live CD Blu-ray set. I've enjoyed most of Steve Hackett's recent concert Blu-ray releases. I am hoping for an excellent mix on this one. I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun to see the concert footage, and again, hoping for the best with the sound. All right, the who, who's next? Price watch. I am seeing prices from reputable vendors down around $245 US. Don't know if that is in anyone's wheelhouse yet in the US or whether reasonable prices are going to ever emerge in other markets like Europe. But um, I pre-ordered through Amazon, and I think they've gotten down as low as like two fifty something. And I'm hoping that the that the price bot on Amazon really bottoms out before it ships, because uh, then customers are guaranteed the lowest pre-order price. So anyway, in my opinion, they're still asking more than this thing is worth. But sometimes you just have to just bite the bullet and and go for it. So. My sympathies to everyone for whom this will end up just being a pass due to cost. And I hope that at least it can be enjoyed on streaming Atmos for those with that capability. And then maybe down the road, the price of the box might crash. So uh, that sometimes happens like rush signals, rush moving pictures, prices have come way down and people are finally jumping on those sets. And so it can happen. All right, next we have ABC, Lexicon of Love. It is a brand spanking new Blu-ray from the SDE Surround series. I'm actually going to go listen to that next after I hit stop on this recording. I want to hear it ahead of talking to someone really special soon, and I will share that with you if all goes well, and I just want to absorb this latest SDE surround series release before that takes place. And I'm just really, really curious about it because it's getting rave reviews. This is a just a landmark core album for a lot of people. The SDE surround series so far has ranged from brand new albums all the way back quite a ways, at least to the 80s. So for 80s material, I'm seeing like probably the most positivity so far, except for maybe Tears for Fears. So this one is way up there on a lot of people's favorites lists. And I'm hearing good things sonically uh, from reviews. So I want to listen for myself. And I plan to do a review on it, which may be important for those of you who haven't purchased it yet. And it looks like it's still available. If you have any inclination to enjoy this Blu-ray, I would jump on it sooner rather than later because these SDE exclusives can sell out. All right, available over at Burning Shed and on SDE.com, we have XTC Big Express. This is the latest in the XTC Surround Series. You get a Blu-ray of the format that I like to call box set on a Blu-ray, where it's just packed with basically everything that you could possibly hope for for an album, uh, sometimes video and at least sonically. We're going to get Stephen Wilson multi-channel mixes and XTC are just brilliant, so I just can't wait to hear this record in multi-channel to get just sucked as deep into it as possible, and I'm sure it will be weird and enjoyable, and I'm super happy to see another entry in the XTC surround series. I was, I was losing hope there for a while, and I hope this isn't the last one either. Okay, Bruce Sword. One of my favorite current artists and one of my favorite current multi-channel mixing engineers. He is releasing his very own solo album called Luminescence. It's available for pre-order now, and it looks like it comes with CDs and a DVD. I'm not in love with the way that K-Scope Records releases um, Bruce Sword's solo albums just on a lossy DVD. I really wish they would just front the extra cash 
for a Blu-ray release. But at least you can go get Bruce Sword's material loss, Leslie, over on immersiveaudioalbum.com. It's just that if you want the deluxe package, which Bruce always does an amazing job on, and you want the lossless multi-channel listening, you have to pay twice. And I don't think that's quite fair to fans. So I hope that K-Scope will reconsider for future releases. It looks like Bruce is like one of their major artists. Like, you know, he made the recent newsletter. This this album, Luminescence, is featured in the newsletter. So I don't know. I feel like they should up their game on that. And along the lines of Bruce Sword, I promise, I promise, 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 I am working on a review of this, this book set, this amazing book set from The Pineapple Thief. How did we find our way? This is like the first six or seven The Pineapple Thief albums. I say six or seven because I think one of them is actually technically maybe an EP or like a, a bonus tracks collection. And I am just in love with Little Man in Atmos. I have listened to all the albums. I want to listen to one more album in Atmos. And I, I've been through the book quite a bit, and I want to digest that a little bit more. This is just a beautiful, beautiful set. And I am going to do like a review of it. So I don't want to you know belabor any points about it now. But I mean, it's just, it's a beautiful set. It's a beautiful set, and I plan to do a full review. I hope that anyone who is interested in it gets it before it sells out. And also along the lines of Bruce Sword, he is the mixing engineer credited on an upcoming Tesseract release, War of Bean. And since he did such an amazing job on the last Catatonia album, Sky Void of Stars. I really have high expectations for this. I just don't know Tesseract very well, and I haven't taken the time lately to audition any material. So why don't you all tell me if I should be interested in the upcoming Tesseract multi-channel Blu-ray release, and I might just jump on it if there is enough interest. All right, Peter Gabriel, I.O. It is his upcoming album. He's been releasing a lot of the tracks and then remixes of the tracks. And I'm really just waiting for the album. I think I've heard briefly a moment or so of the music for this project. And I really just wanna take in the album. It's slated for late 2023. That's really all I know. I don't know if it will receive a physical multi-channel release such as on Blu-ray or if it will be mixed in multi-channel at all, to be frank. But uh, Peter Gabriel did release his last studio album on 5.1 SACD, and he owns Real World Studios, which has put out like brilliant multi-channel work, such as from Big Big Train. So I, I have high hopes, at least, you know, hopefully it'll be streaming Atmos, but I would love a, a physical multi-channel release. Peter Gabriel is a genius and an icon. So I'm I'm hoping the best for this album. I, I'm not absolutely in love with every second of Up, the last multi-channel record, but I respect it. And I, I really just hope that this is an interesting listen. Certainly enough events of extreme interest have transpired in this world since his last album. So uh, there's plenty to write about should he choose to. So I am definitely, definitely intrigued by this project. I thought it might be fun ahead of this video to go check Burning Shed and to filter for 5.1 content because I thought that might capture most of the multi-channel releases that they have available right now. And what I found are releases of interest from Barclay James Harvest, from Richard Wright, David Bowie. I've already talked about the Ziggy Stardust concert, the, the updated release coming out later. So that's available on Burning Shed. And then also Trevor Rabin of Yes Fame. I'm curious about that. I'd like to audition some of the material just to see if the music is a fit. And then if so, that could be a very cool multi-channel release, in my opinion. And you know, I haven't had a lot of time to listen to streaming Atmos lately, but there is a wide variety of stuff that could be worth checking out. Recently, I will admit, I put on Taylor Swift red taylor's version i believe is what it was called it was six songs and the atmos was outstanding and i dug some of the material 
And then I also had a chance to catch Joe Satriani's Surfing with the Alien in Atmos. And whoever mixed that just really had a ball with it. It is so much fun. I actually listened to Surfing with the Alien recently on CD in my car, and it didn't really grab me the same way that it did back when I was a teenager. But the Atmos mix uh, really did, actually. It sucked me in. It is uh, revealing and it really, really, really celebrates the material. Like you get to hear the aliens surfing around the room with this swishing effect that actively pans and it's just a lot of fun. So I figured I would point you at that. I am not sure that it's ever going to receive a physical release. So it's just streaming Atmos for now. And lastly, I wanted to mention a very special thing that recently happened to me. You might remember that not too long ago, I did a review of the Voyage of Yotu, the Blu-ray from Moon Days Records and really, really, really just fell in love with this record. And in the meantime, a, a really cool relationship has matured uh, between me and the producer of the Blu-ray, Alessandro. He's a really cool guy. He is just a super, super, super nice man. And, and I'm really ecstatic that he chose to produce this Blu-ray and successfully got it out into the world. I want all of us to sell it out. So go pick up the Blu-ray of the, the Voyage of Iotu by Franco Musita. And then what happened as a thank you for doing that Blu-ray review, I actually just received uh, the double LP of the Voyage of Iotu, Franco Musita. And it's a double vinyl and it comes with a book and and Mr. Musita was kind enough to actually inscribe the album for me. It's actually a really beautiful inscription, and I want to digest that more. And then I plan to do a thank you video for receiving this LP and just for the magical experience of, of getting to, to know this album. I have listened in stereo and in multi-channel on the Blu-ray, and now I get to put on the records. And I just love records so much, just that visceral experience of cleaning them and caring for them and dropping the needle and just the specific mastering that goes into, you know, cutting the wax and all that. So anyway, thank you for watching. Please, in the comments, list any releases that you're excited about that I haven't covered. Oh, I almost forgot. It's sitting right here. <laughs> Fish, 13th star. The CD Blu-ray set just showed up. I'm super excited about this. Not only is it one of my favorite Fish solo records, but it also has been mixed into Atmos by Andy Bradfield and Avril McIntosh, and they've just been slaying it recently. So I fully expect that they have just crushed it on, on this mix. I'm hoping that the mastering is sympathetic. I really, really, really would like to talk to whoever ends up mastering their their end products. I'm not in love with, with the mastering usually of the um, Bradfield Macintosh output. Although I have to say script for a jester's tear sounds amazing. So it, it is possible. So anyway, I just received this today. Thank you, Simone, for walking it down to the post office and getting this sent to me. I know you work very hard to support Fish's music and and I appreciate it, and I know all of his fans appreciate it. So I'm looking forward to, as soon as I can, cracking this open, digesting it, and then reviewing it for you. So sorry, I almost forgot to mention this. It is, as far as I know, only available on um, Fish's music store, per usual for his solo material. So I'll report back. And again, thank you for watching. If you like what I do, don't forget to like subscribe, ring the notification bell so you get notified right away of new material, particularly news that you might need or want to know about multi-channel music coming out and being reissued and just all that sort of thing. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. Your time is very valuable and I appreciate you investing it in this channel. And with all that said, whether it be Quad, 5.1, Atmos, or other, just live life in surround. Um, it looks like it was filmed at the Ziggo Dome in Anch...
It looks like it was filmed at the Ziggo Dome in Ant 